Gary's elucidation of this concept of the sacred universe is laid out in more detail in a collection of his essays, the book entitled The Sacred Universe, Earth, Spirituality, and Religion in the 21st Century. In his essay, Religion in the 21st Century, there's a particularly appropriate reference to the parliament of four religions. He writes, and I quote, if the finest consequence of the first parliament of religions held in 1893 was the recovery of the divine in the human soul through the leadership of Swami Vivekananda, the finest consequence of the second parliament of world religions held in 1993, which is around when he wrote this essay, should be the recovery of an exalted sense of the divine in the grandeur of the natural world. One clear insight and strong assertion of Barry was, uh, was that one cannot have a rich inner spiritual life, nor indeed a healthy physical life, on a severely degraded planet. Again, he writes, and I quote, at this moment, since 1993, this emphasis on the integrity of the natural world as a condition for the integrity of the inner spiritual world needs to be emphasized because the relationship of humans with the natural world has deteriorated in a devastating manner in the 100 years between the 1893 and 1993 parliaments of religion. Religion, very plain, was born out of a sense of human awe at the wondrous milieu of which human life is part. It is a human response to the sacredness that our first ancestors experienced and celebrated in ritual and symbol. But spirituality is not only a human activity. Today, more than ever before, there is a greater awareness available to us of the profound intricacy and mystery that is our universe. That is what science has provided in its history of the emergence of the universe as we know it today. Despite this, however, many of us, in particular in the northern richer nations, deny ourselves and our children the first-hand experience of the natural world. We have insulated ourselves from that world. In so doing, we have deprived ourselves of its spiritual nurturance and built an artificial world that is relentless in consuming the very earth beneath our feet. With reference to our lack of a viable presence to the land, Barry wrote in the sacred universe, and I quote, the main difficulty in restoring a viable mode of human presence on the land is that we have found ourselves so locked into and dependent on the existing industrial system for our food, shelter, clothing, transportation, and jobs that any thought of an alternative way of living has appeared more of a dream than a reality." End quote. Religions existed in, existing in such environments have lost their intimacy with the natural world out of which they were born. Hence, it is a colossal challenge to build the basis for a strong moral stance with regard to the ecological crisis. The great work involves the reconstruction and renewal of our religions by reconnecting with a primordial sense of a sacred universe. What is needed is a new mode of consciousness, according to Barry. And lest we think that this is some pie in the sky, an otherworldly, unattainable, unattainable dream, it is not. The new mode of consciousness is understood by Barry to be functional. It is measurable by its effects. It translates into difficult political, economic, social, legal, religious alternatives to our present way of living in the world. This is what constitutes the great work. The new mode of consciousness is a transformation from a purely human historical reference and context for life to one that is time-spatial. In other words, space. The entire cosmos, as, it's, as it is presently known, and some yet unknown, is subject to time. There is no static, unchanging sphere that will eventually mitigate any damage humans do in the creation of their own history. We are an intimate part of a vast time-space in which, ironically, our human decisions are not reduced in significance <coughs> against such vastness, but rather take on a more spectacular significance. To a very large degree, the future existence of life in the cosmos depends on our decisions now. This sounds terribly anthropocentric in a vision that is attempting to overturn the historical consequences of anthropocentrism. But there is a critical difference. Anthropocentrism privileged human life 
as a mode of existence within the universe. Barry's notion of the great work in a sacred universe enhances human responsibility, not privilege. Just as each species gives a unique contribution, so ought the human species. That contribution, as is the case of all others, is for the integrity of the whole universe in which hum humans are an intimate component. Religions have a special role to play in the articulation and celebration of the sacredness of the universe. Wiley is not naive regarding the human construction of what we might call reality in any sphere of human life. Barry insists that the universe itself possesses spirituality. With a special reference to the earth, he wrote, not to recognize the spirit dimension of the earth reveals a radical lack of spiritual perception. He was particularly critical of developments within religions, especially the text-based religions such as Christianity, which ignored the manifestation of the divine within the natural world and saw the divine merely in the word. Our most immediate task, he wrote, is to establish this new sense of the earth and the functional role of humans within the earth community. One might ask, how are we to do that? His answer, in summary, is, first of all, recognize that it is the very spirituality of the earth itself which is acting within all that acts upon the earth. And further, I quote, there is a triviality in any spiritual discipline that does not experience itself as supported by the spiritual as well as the physical dynamics of the entire cosmic earth process. Ultimately, spirituality is a mode of being in which not only the divine and human commune with each other, but through which we discover ourselves in the universe, and the universe discovers itself in us. Traditionally, many aboriginal groups invoked cosmic forces in their religious celebrations. They recognized these forces in their own very being, their ceremonies, their dancing, their body and home decorations. Today, the restoration of this sense of the sacredness of the universe, both in its vast space-time as well as in the particularity of its expressions on planet Earth, has a special urgency. The religious forces of the world, very challenges, with their sense of sacred, can evoke the psychic energies needed to transform our era of devastation into one that can meet the ecological crisis. Very strongly held, and I, believe, and I believe as well, that it is only when energized by a relevant, functional, and powerful vision of the sacred universe that the great work of transforming human life to one of ecological responsibility can be effectively sustained. Thank you.